The Financial System Inquiry Final Report, or Murray Report, made 44 recommendations relating to Australia's financial system. These recommendations were made on five specific themes. Two, strengthen the economy by making the financial system more resilient, lift the value of the superannuation system and retirement incomes, drive economic growth and productivity through settings that promote innovation, enhance confidence and trust by creating an environment in which financial firms treat customers fairly, and enhance regulator independence and accountability and minimize the need for future regulation. The inquiry identified three characteristics of an effective financial system efficiency, resilience, and fair treatment for consumers. It considered that confidence and trust in the system are essential ingredients in building an efficient, strong, and fair financial system that facilitates economic growth and meets the needs of Australians. The Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia, or ASFA, released its The Future of Australia's Super, a new framework for a better system, November 2014 report detailing a set of principles that should guide superannuation policy decisions, as well as outlining a policy framework to help the superannuation system deliver on its objectives. ASFA suggested that, 20 years after the introduction of the Superannuation Guarantee, or SG, the large demographic shift that is occurring due to an ageing population is revealing weaknesses in the way the system caters to those entering retirement. The RBA decided to leave the official cash rate on hold at 2.5% in its December meeting. RBA Governor Glenn Stevens commented that in Australia most data is consistent with moderate economic growth. Stevens added that in the RBA's judgement monetary policy is appropriately configured to foster sustainable growth in demand and inflation outcomes consistent with the targets. With borrowing costs proving too high, China has cut interest rates for the first time since 2012, with further cuts expected. China's rate cuts suggest that global monetary conditions are still easing, with monetary easing in Japan, Europe and China taking over from the end of quantitative easing in the US. China's easing is also positive for commodities and Australian shares, according to AMP Capital. A strong third quarter for the US economy has seen GDP expand at a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 3.9% in the three months ended to 30 September, exceeding the 3.5% first estimated by the Commerce Department. This follows GDP growth of 4.6% in the second quarter, which reversed a fall of 2.1% in the first quarter GDP, which was due to a very cold winter. Systemic stress among euro area banks and sovereigns declined further to levels last seen before the onset of the GFC in 2007, according to the European Central Bank's latest financial stability review. The ECB stressed that balance sheet repair in the euro area has continued, and banks have strengthened their balance sheets. However, the work of restoring public finances remains uneven and unfinished. The Corporation's Streamlining of Future of Financial Advice Regulation 2014 has been voted down by the Senate, reverting the current law back to the original FOFA legislation. The most relevant changes from the Senate bloc on the regulations are as follows. Opt-in. The opt-in requirement will now be in the law. Fee disclosure statements. The requirement to provide a fee disclosure statement or FDS, will now apply retrospectively. Advisors must now provide an FDS to both new clients and existing clients, that is, clients that they had prior to 1 July 2013. General Advice – Conflicted Remuneration Exemption The changes regarding conflicted remuneration on general advice and execution-only services have been reversed. Best Interests the original best interest duty in section 961B of the Corporations Act, which includes the catch-all provision, will be reinstated. Scaled advice. The changes to section 961B aimed at facilitating scaled advice will be reversed. ASIC has announced a joint industry project to develop innovative digital financial product disclosure that aims to boost investors' understanding of financial products. This is part of the regulator's broader work in promoting digitalization and new media to help engage investors. 
ASIC will work with product providers AMP and Vanguard to develop and use to test a short online key fact sheet and a self-assessment tool to guide investor understanding. Over the year ending 30 September 2014, Authorised Deposit Taking Institutions, or ADIs, recorded a combined net profit after tax of $33.5 billion, an increase of $3.6 billion, or 12%, year on year, according to APRA's quarterly ADI performance report released in November. The report contains information on ADI's financial performance, financial position, capital adequacy, and asset quality. As at 30 September 2014, the total assets of ADIs were $4.2 trillion, an increase of $345 billion, or 9.1% over the year.